Today, on Pat's Car Garage, we continue the front suspension rebuild on the Jeep. Last video, you saw the beginning and end, since I removed all the steering components first and reinstalled them last. This video is everything in between that you've missed, and only focuses on actual suspension components, not steering. We'll be doing the sway bar bushings, end links, the track bar, all the control arms, the shocks, the springs, the spring isolators, and the bump stops. Next step is to remove the track bar. I struggled with this for a good while. Yeah, boys, I got the track bar nut out. That was uh, required a little bit of um, improvisation. So the problem is, normally there's supposed to be a flag nut back there, but there wasn't. Maybe it rusted off or something, who knows? But basically, oh man, the camera's not, oh, okay, there you go. So I took an angle grinder, let's try to get a good shot of that. I took my angle grinder with a fat disc and I just opened up this hole a little bit more and that allows me to put a wrench back there, grab the nut and hit it with an impact from this side. So, yeah. Take a second to note here that the track bar mount on the axle side is no longer round. I'll address how you can fix that later in the video. Well, I finally removed the track bar. It was a lot harder uh, than it should have been because stuck on that end, on the axle end, stuck on this end. So what I ended up doing was I took the uh, track bar mount off, just four bolts holding it on. And then with a reciprocating with a reciprocating saw, I was able to get in and uh, cut the um, cut the nut off, and then with a pickle fork, pop the track bar off. So now loosen all the bolts on all the control arms, but don't remove them yet. I'm only showing me doing one control arm here for the sake of brevity, but loosen the bolts on all four. This removes the tension on the bushings, which will allow us to drop the axle far enough down once the shocks are unbolted to remove the springs without any special tools. To remove the shock absorber, I put a little bit of pressure under the axle with my jack, then I remove the top nut, you might need a little swivel joint to help reach it, on the driver's side. Then I unbolted the bottom end, released the pressure off the jack, and removed the shock absorber. Removing the spring at this point is pretty easy. Just remove the retainer on the bottom and pop the spring out with a big old screwdriver. The, um, the thing that holds the, um, the bump stop, you have to put a big pipe wrench on it and you can actually unscrew the whole thing. Removing the old spring isolator will likely take some time. After so many years it gets stuck on there pretty bad, but with some flat screwdrivers you can eventually pop it out. The new one will go on much easier, and don't worry if you can't push it all the way up to the top, the force of the spring will do it for you. Use some silicone grease when pushing your new bump stops into their cups. It helps when the cup is not in the car, so then you can kind of push it against the ground. That'll make it a lot easier. Reinstalling the spring and the shock is the reverse of removal. To tighten the top nut of the shock, start the nut by hand on the threads until you can't spin it anymore. Then, release the jack from under the axle. The force of the spring pushing down on the axle against the nut will stop the shock body from spinning as you tighten the nut, allowing you to torque it properly. Removing the control arms is pretty easy, unless you're in rusty Canada, of course. Ooh, guys, let me tell you, removing this control arm was a real piece of work because the, um, well, the old camber bolt, uh, or cam bolt rather, it was uh, the metal sleeve of the bushing seized to the bolt, so I simply was not able to pull it out of the silly hole. But now I finally got it out, so as you can see, new control arms installed. I'm not going to tighten the bushings yet, that's important. But yeah, to line up the axle, I finally got myself a ratchet strap, as you can see over there. Well, it's overexposed, but there's a ratchet strap there. So yeah, um, you can tie it around the, uh, the axle, I hooked it up to the Mercedes and uh, I ratcheted it a little bit until all my bolt holes lined up. So I'm going to have to do a similar procedure for the upper control arm. Changing the upper control arms is a little bit easier. I will not be replacing the upper control arm bushings on the axle side in this video. I planned on doing it but I ran out of time and they looked to be in a decent shape. Perhaps they were changed out previously. To line up the bolts, you'll need a ratchet strap. 
loop the strap around the mount and hook it to the transmission cross member and tighten it until the bolts line up. Remember, don't tighten any of the bolts yet, just thread the nut and leave it loose for now. You can also use your jack to help line things up. Same basic procedure for the other side. I actually found it to be easier to line up on this side. I just needed to help the bolt come out with my angle grinder. You may have noticed I am replacing all the fasteners that I am removing, precisely because I don't feel like messing around with rusty bolts. If they aren't coming out, the grinder is. Remember, you need special bolts for suspension components. For imperial sized bolts, you need grade 8. For metric bolts, you need grade 10.9 or higher. Do not use anything less than that, they will break and you will have a bad time. All right, it has now been about two months since I've done the suspension and because I finally got myself a welder, see, I could finally address one little problem I had. Say my track bar mount was, uh, wasn't round anymore. However, now as you can see, I've welded on the washer, I've angle grounded down so that it's flat. And now it should be okay. I do have to file the little bump that's uh, sticking out up there, but that's a pretty easy fix. I got a little bit too trigger happy with the welder with that. But yeah, now, uh, trust me, like the, the old hole was, I should have taken a before shot of it. I didn't, but yeah, the, uh, the before was quite uh, horrible. It was really, really elongated, but now finally got a nice and round hole there for the track bar mount. So FYI, I'm gonna have to look up the torque spec, but make sure you get a grade, um, this is a metric 10.9 bolt, really strong, 8.8 .8 will shear right off if you put that there. So, you know, just make sure you get the right grade of bolt. I'm gonna put the uh, torque spec also for this, cause it has to be on pretty tight, obviously. Now let's jump back in time to finish this video off. Don't judge my weld too harshly. That's literally the first time I welded anything. Now you may be wondering, what if I don't have a welder? Don't worry, I got you covered, bro. The alternative is installing an aftermarket heavy-duty track bar, which comes with a larger bolt, and this requires you to drill out the existing hole, making it round again. You can also buy a heavy-duty bushing instead, but that requires you to have the tools needed to press the old bushing out. Personally, I would just replace a track bar, since on the ZJ the chassis side is a ball joint type thing which can wear out and is not replaceable anyway. Do not tighten the side of the track bar with a bushing just yet, but you can tighten the other side now. I forgot to film it, but now you can remove the sway bar, replace the bushings, and reinstall it. But, once again, do not fully tighten the sway bar just yet. Here's the important part. It's time to set the jack stands under the axle and let the weight of the car sit on the axle. It is in this position that the bushings need to be tightened. Failure to do so will cause premature failure. You want all the bushings to be relaxed at right height. Leave the sway bar last, but for everything else the order does not matter. Once everything else is tightened, install the sway bar end links, tighten them to spec, and finally tighten the sway bar itself. I'm going to stop this video here. The full ending is in the previous video as I now reinstall the steering components. I hope you enjoyed it!